do you think is going to be the breakout player of 2023? The 682 says it's Turpin time, baby. Uh, the 817 Cowboys breakout player, B. John Robinson. Boom. A lot of carryover on the text from our B. John Robinson conversation. It's a hot one out, out there, and people have strong opinions, and, and uh, so do all, all four of us. Segment here is brought to you by Soda. Uh, and uh, it's also uh, brought to you by us here, the G-Bag Nation on 105 through the fan. Thought you'd appreciate it. Okay, uh, breakout players. We go to blogging the boys here. Matt Holleran, uh, quality writer here uh, with the outfit. They're blogging about the Cowboys every day over here on this website. We appreciate the content, guys. Good work. Uh, number one on their list, running back Tony Pollard. Had a big year last year, 1,007 yards, 12 total touchdowns, 5.2 in attempt. But uh, maybe we're in for some more here. Uh, uh, in, increase the carries from 200 to 300, and, and boom, you could be really off and running with a, a, an all-pro type of season for Tony Pollard. I just don't know if he can take all those touches. What do he, you guys think? He's broken out. I like, love a good re-break Come out. on. Like, I love blogging the boys. But number one, Tony Pollard, we're picking a guy that just broke out last year. Matthew's always hollering. Yeah, man, I think uh, I think that is we, – we've already seen the breakout from Tony Pollard. Uh, now he's off an injury, so I, I this would not be the uh, the breakout prediction year for me necessarily. This would be a setback year. Uh, but uh, for me, and we've got this name texted in once from the 469, I immediately went to Sam Williams. I think he's Mr. Breakout. That guy is an absolute stud. You know, just a total alpha athlete. The way that he physically connects with people, like the body slam play from last year, I'd I know one, he got a flag because it was just so strong, but I think he has elite pass rusher makeup. You know, yeah. I, I think he could be a, a star in the league for a very long time. So that's a good one. The 469, it was throwing out Sam Williams as well. Uh, is, is his off the field stuff that happens to him occasionally going to allow him to focus on the things he needs to do to be a really good player on the field? I mean, I think it's a, a fair question to to ask. The maturity that, levels. That yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the that's whole, the been only a pretty thing. smooth year, hasn't it? Well, Other the whole than thing, that car, he, he, car he, being, he bought a car, then wrecked it the same day. Yeah. So, so I mean, you know, to Nobody me, he got hurt though. There's there's times where they've kind of talked about him when they, those, some of the questions they had about him coming out of Mississippi, where you know, that he needed to grow up, you know, yeah. and so maybe maybe that maybe the automobile. Uh, accident caused him to to kind of reevaluate some things. He meets Parcells as his coach. He does. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. go ahead, no nonsense. Go get me that Gatorade like he did with the market square. But I, I like Sam Williams. I think he, that he is due for a big year. He had 22 pressures last year, seven quarterback hits, four sacks. Heck, you, you could tell me he would double that. I'd, I'd co-sign. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, and, and because he's he's got it set up nicely, it's not like he's got to be the guy. Like, Offenses have to worry about Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons from a pass rush standpoint. So it's not like he's going to be a guy that sees a bunch of double teams or anything like that. So he's set up nicely. I think he's uh, I think he's due for a big year, but it's fair. It's fair to ask that question there, Broadus, and I think that would be the only thing that yeah. would prevent him from being a, a super savage on the defense. I think they like Peyton Hendershot more than they like Jake Ferguson over there. So you'd, wow. go, you'd go Hendershot? What? That mm -hmm. is shocking to me. That's interesting because number three on the list from Blogging the Boys is Peyton Hendershot. Ooh. Picking up 23-year-old tight end Peyton was one of the Dallas's best under-the-radar moves last year. Scooped up by the Cowboys after the draft. Ended up making the team as a UDFA. Found his way onto the field. Why do they like Hendershot more in Ferguson, Brian? I feel like they, they when they, they look at more of the up-the-field stuff, the ability after the catch... Now, let's be honest. You know, We were all talking about these tight ends and like, why would you draft a tight end in the first round? Go look at the numbers for the two tight ends combined when you start to look at production. And then and then ask me that question why you wouldn't want to draft a tight end. Let's not act like these guys had 40, 50, 60 catches each. Right. You know? Well, they had the teacher's pet, Dalton Schultz, running in there. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. But that, but you know, that that's I I, I the reason why I would mention Hendershot, again, just talking to some folks over there, not nothing against Jake Ferguson. Okay. They've they, there's a I don't know why Peyton Hendershot didn't get drafted last year when you watch him play. Yeah. You know, and I and I do feel like there's that down the field presence, probably a little bit better blocker, you know, a little bit better after catch. So they both have you, good you energy. Think Hendershot better yeah. blocker than Ferguson? I think so. Really? It's yeah. just crazy. I think Hendershot got benched because he couldn't block. When you when you go through 
when you go through like the, the last 11 games for Hendershot last year, it's two catches, 18 yards. One of those catches was a touchdown. He mm-hmm. did have the caused interception, I believe, in the Titans game. And then he was inactive. I don't remember if he was injured. I think he was injured. Injured. It's a long learning curve for tight ends. Yeah. It is. Usually for tight ends, it's year three or year four. Hey, by we the time saw that good. with Dalton Schultz. Yeah. I would go with Fergie. Uh, I think he's more well-rounded. But I see what they're saying with, with Hendershot. He's yeah. got a little bit okay. more wiggle. Deron Bland, I think, is an easy answer to this. I think now that you have a full year starting with Deron Bland, he's, he started the season well, strong. He's everything that I thought. the season strong. He's everything, he was everything that I thought Anthony Brown was going to be. Because mm-hmm. I remember this time last year, we're talking about breakout players and uh, I was talking uh, with the when we we're the Dorrance Armstrong was a guy, and then Anthony Brown was another guy I talked about. And but Bland's done a hell of a job; he really, really has. Keep those uh, texts coming in at eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three breakout players. How about one for Damone Clark? We're gonna get something from any of these linebackers, Cox or Clark. I don't. I you know what? I can't sit here with any confidence and say that. Okay. Not right now. I mean, every time that you talked about people, and I asked George Edwards about this. He's now down in Tampa. So, but he, George was telling me, he goes, Hey, uh, Cox, you know, well, two steps forward or one step forward, two steps back kind of a situation with him. It's so we'll see. Such it's a bummer. It's funny though, the way you look at it, like when I think about breakout players, how many guys on the offense, I mean, I, the, the two tight ends are fair to throw up, but otherwise it's like who, who on the offense is breaking out. We'll see after the draft, you know, if they draft a running back or one it's some 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 type of player offensively, then you can see maybe this guy has a big year. But all my breakout guys, I'm thinking, are on defense. You can't Izzy McQuamu is a guy that comes to name for me. Man, you throw Turpin in there, and you're just thinking, oh, how about another guy with the with the beginning name last name of T was uh, was Tolbert? But you sure. can't you can't even no you, you can't even have can't any confidence. That. You can't predict that. You want a uh, you want a T first name Tyler Smith for a breakout from pretty I, good rookie lineman to great lineman. Yeah. Oh, go. I see. I see what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That would be something, you know, if he if he could do that and uh, maybe get as good in the pass game as he was in the run game. Okay. How about this? And real quick here, gauging who's under the most pressure for the Cowboys heading into the 2023 season. Who is under the most pressure to you? They, player or coach? Well, you know, it's interesting because we're taking a, a player from all three levels or a, 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 a person from all three levels. We go to LP Cruz blogging the boys. Jerry Jones with 10% of the pressure. Okay. They admittedly said he would have fired himself years ago if uh, he wasn't the owner and GM. The most valuable franchise in the world of sports prides itself on being the best show, but the last 26 years of mediocrity are more akin to Barnum and Bailey's. <laughs> Uh, in a modern Greek tragedy. <laughs> oh, no. I like what LP's doing here. Nice work. Uh, the Cowboys have had good teams on paper. I feel like there's got to be some pressure, and, and maybe we got those trades because Jerry is feeling that pressure to actually put together a winner instead of a playoff team. Uh, Mike McCarthy's feeling 40% of it. Brian. I think McCarthy's got the freaking heat on him, man. You I'll, don't go ahead and make those calls. I'm taking them over, and the pressure's not on you. Yeah, I'll, you I'll, go pressure pie chart. I think McCarthy's dominating. I say another Mike, Mike Solari, the offensive line coach. It's important. You can't go out there. If you flop around on that offensive line this year and look bad and struggle and give up pressure and you know, have a lot of problems running the football, and it's because your guys aren't getting the job done, that's on that line coach. Is that too. a McCarthy buddy? That's McCarthy, buddy, which in fact puts the his pressure is puts going you back on McCarthy. McCarthy, yeah, absolutely. And they say Dak Prescott is feeling quite a bit of the pressure. They carved it up a hundred percent. They gave ten to Jerry, forty to Mike, and then fifty uh, percent of the pressure to Dak Prescott. Makes sense. I think Michael Gallup's under a bit of pressure this year too. I don't think Dak Prescott's going anywhere. I don't I think. Either. I think the other guys, you can, not not Jerry Jones, ain't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that forty percent is probably low on Mike McCarthy. They're trying to give a new deal to Dak. He'll be here for. At least four, maybe another eight years. They've got a quarterback they think they can win with. They're not trying to go back to quarterback purgatory, man.